The world would not have any issues when it comes to electricity today if the problem of storage had been solved. The sun gives our planet so much power that if we could only harness all that radiation for 15 minutes, we could literally power the entire world for one year. But how do we store all that energy? That has been the biggest hurdle the scientists have been trying to solve for many, many years. Now, there's light in a tunnel, and I would say that is thanks to the whole electric car evolution. We push the progress in batteries and unprecedented speed forward. But is lithium the answer? Or maybe the newest game-changing sodium ion battery will take over and solve this problem. We will talk about all that in today's video. Two of the world's biggest battery manufacturers, CATL and BYD, have revealed a sodium ion battery that has the potential to totally change the storage market. And I'm not talking just solar, but mainly EV, utility scale, and more. If you take a look at the periodic table that you remember or not from chemistry class, you can see that sodium is just under lithium, which means that they have similar physical and chemical properties. Sodium ion and lithium ion batteries batteries are built in a very similar way, so the manufacturing process should not be that big of a change. Both generate electricity through chemical reaction and are made up of an anode, cathode, separator, and an electrolyte. But in sodium ion battery, lithium ions are replaced with sodium ions in the battery's cathode, and lithium salts are swapped for sodium salts in the electrolyte. The most significant distinction, however, lies in the abundance of one over the other across the globe. Sources say that sodium is 500 or even a thousand times more abundant on Earth than lithium. Ding, 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 more affordable. And big difference when it comes to those two elements is also the mining process, which is much, much easier for sodium than it is for lithium. When it comes to sustainable options and more environmentally friendly, sodium definitely wins. Lithium mining is notorious for releasing tons of CO2 into the atmosphere, as well as often contaminating surrounding areas like rivers and lake, which really directly affects our safety. We often talk about sustainability and climate change, but lots of skeptics that want to invest in electric cars or a solar system for their personal use do not want to invest in something that is actually toxic to them as humans. You can't just throw away an old battery and forget about it, even though really many of us are really guilty of that. Those can literally set on fires during transportation or at landfills. Sodium can be found anywhere in the world, not just sea salt water, but it's also contained in the crust of our planet as well. As far as lithium goes, majority of it is contained within basically three countries, Australia, China, and Chile, and in developing continents like Africa, which caused another issue, human rights issue. So considering the resources of sodium USA actually has, it would be so great for them to actually get a hand and try to move, of that, move some of that storage development and manufacturing to USA rather than again give China the upper hand. Lithium is also subject to shortages, which ultimately results in price hikes. Price of lithium hydroxide has gone up from $11,000 per metric ton in 2018 to a $68,000 as of Q1 of this year. Now, that number has dropped to about $30,000 as of today, considering the slowdown in purchasing activities and obviously the state of the economy. But as the economy recovers, the price of lithium will only continue to rise, especially since there are limited resources. Now, comparing that to sodium hydroxide, that is well below $1,000 per metric ton as of May of 2023. Now, you can see the cost difference and that advantage that sodium has when it comes to price. Besides the big dollar difference, the lifespan of sodium ion batteries is longer and they can be charged and discharged more times than lithium. And not to mention the fact that they can actually be fully discharged to zero volts and they remain stable. Whereas lithium ion batteries, if discharged, could lead to internal shorts due to dissolution or other reactions with the electrolytes. Sodium ion batteries can also operate in a wider temperature range, which is another big plus for stationary storage like grid scale or residential use. 
Now it's not all so dandy when it comes to sodium ion batteries. The biggest difference in favor of lithium is their high energy density and performance. And this is exactly why those are the batteries that are used in electric cars today. Sodium ion batteries didn't get as much attention for many, many decades. But now based on years of the world developing and using electric cars and storage products, we have learned that lithium can actually lead to some dangers. And now that's based basically due to thermal runaway and the risk of those batteries faulting and catching fire. You probably have seen those viral videos where cars set on fire or even explode. Now as far as home storage goes, most municipalities will actually require a safety bollard to be installed in your garage when installing backup batteries. Now that just to avoid the car or you driving them into driving into the batteries and causing risks. Those battery giants provided testing of drilling into sodium ion batteries as well as lithium and sodium ion batteries did not even react. This is huge. China-based giant CATL, which by the way is a supplier to Tesla, revealed a sodium ion battery that has an energy density of 160 watt hours per kilogram, which is not that far off from LFP chemistry that reaches similar values. If you have watched my last year video, NMC chemistry that has that higher power density, and this is why lithium ion batteries have been used in electric vehicles more so than LFP. But now that CATL has a goal of 200 watt hours per kilogram, that really should change the game as far as storage goes for both residential usage as well as utility scale storage. Because the space really should not play that big of a role when it comes to those huge utility projects or our garages. CATL says that they will hit mass production of those batteries in Q4 of this year. So like right now. They also said that those batteries will cost around $77 per kilowatt hour. Like, wow. And it gets even better. As the volume increase, the cost is expected to go down to $40 per kilowatt hour. Now compare that to over $150 for lithium plus for lithium ion batteries per one kilowatt hour. We're talking half or one third of that price. So now imagine buying a backup battery for your own home for less than $1,000. Despite the larger space required, CATL officially said that the batteries that they will produce will be developed for electric cars in the future. And BYD also said that they will start mass production this year to develop a sodium ion battery pack for electric cars. Their new BYD Siegel car with a price tag of, get this, $11,300 is one of the cheapest electric cars that will have 30 kilowatt hour battery pack and will use sodium ion battery chemistry. Now, obviously this is not our Ford F-150 Lightning and our 98 kilowatt hour battery bank, but we can only hope. Electric car industry is just one of the few storage markets. Next big one will be grid scale storage where the lower energy density will be less of an issue. They can simply just install more sodium ion batteries to make up for lower energy density and they don't have to worry about temperature ranges. And it'll still be more affordable. Same comparing it to LFP chemistry and some of the battery backup options sold to homeowners today as part of their solar system. In the end, sodium ion battery is a super exciting new venture and it's a huge prospect for future of storage for electric cars, but also us little humans that just want to install a solid battery backup in our home to become more independent. There's obviously more to the story than just the price tags. Sodium ion batteries would bring on better longevity and reliability to our cars and homes and our grid. Obviously this technology is still in its infancy, but seeing CATL as well as BYD invest, it only gives me more hope for the future. As those giants put out their battery products, I'm hoping that within the next few years, three, four, we will start seeing more improvement to those new batteries. I am personally just hoping that America will seize this huge opportunity as a potential leader in sodium ion technology and reduce the dependency on China for storage production or at least somehow get a piece of the pie in the whole scheme of things. What do you guys think? Please let me know down in the comments and don't forget to subscribe to the channel, give this video a big like, and I will see you in my next one.